Hey, I want to show you something fun. It's been a long time since I've worked with ink, and I am doing that right now. I'm working on this board for, for uh, Sun Valley Community Church down in Gilbert, Arizona. So you see I have some Israelites, and uh, these are going to be illustrations of Old Testament history in the Bible for their youth area over there. But I'm starting with marker, then I'm going to fill it in with airbrush, then go back over the line. So this is not a usual technique for me. I would usually just stick with the paint. I want to show you some fun techniques with the marker that I'm using on this. Uh, this is Moses right here holding the stone tablets. I've drawn it out in pencil and mapped out where my wrinkles are and everything so that I can so that I can be more clean with my marker. Let me get a let me get a better marker too. I think I'm gonna want a new one. Let's see. We'll bring over both. We'll bring over the little one and the big one. The only problem is oops, kicked it. My voice is all echoey because I'm in this big basement downstairs. This place actually used to be a, an auto parts store. It's been remodeled and I'm in the basement of our church here in Flagstaff, borrowing space. So, uh, so what was I gonna show you? What was I gonna do? Let's use this marker. So you see I've got, I've got this guy here and I'm just gonna, what I wanna show you is how you can use the width of these lines to suggest shadows. So on the underside, I'm gonna draw a little bit so that you can see what's going on in this picture. I've got a fat line here. This is a stone tablet, so maybe we won't make it a perfect curved line, which I couldn't do if I tried anyway. Okay. Bring this here. Big old stone tablet. And I've got it in perspective. See how the top is bigger? I've got it coming out toward you. It's leaning on his arm there. Bring this down here. I hope you can see. Then the underside of it, I have down here. Like this, then we make the rest of the tablet here. This is so different than what I usually do, you know, because it's all hard lines. There's no soft edges when you're, when you're using a marker. Now let's do this hand. I say let's do this, isn't that funny? When people are, when people are doing like how-to videos and things, you're always saying, let's do this, let's do this, this, when it's really, it's me doing it. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> now we're gonna make a line here. <laughs> okay, so I'm using thin lines on the top because those are surfaces that I want to look like there's more light hitting them. They're facing upward. Now as I make his thumb, I'll make the line fatter on the underside of it. Now this is tiny details, you know. We'll get into some, I'll get, I'll get into some bigger things. Make one finger here, finger here. The fun part about this is I'm gonna come back with an airbrush. I'm gonna paint a lot of this and then I'll have to redo a whole bunch of lines and I can correct anything that I don't like. Let me do that. So then under his knuckles, I'll use fat lines. Watch one. Make a knuckle there, make a knuckle here. Make a knuckle here. See those fat lines? I mean, I could use skinny ones too, but. Okay, so then. Let's get, let's see, what is a wrist kind of like? Look at my wrist. There's kind of a, a nub on the wrist right here. And then there's a smaller nub right here. 
Then let's make those tendons on the back of his hand. One, two. See, I use skinny lines because those don't bulge out real far. They don't have a large underside. So I just make a skinny little line. Okay, then with the underside of his arm right here. So then on this, this is a good example here, this underside of his arm, I can use a fatter line to represent the, uh, the, sh the shadow. And then you can see that I've got his muscles coming out right here. Whenever you have lines overlapping, I can make this little transition. Instead of just a hard overlap, I make a curved line showing the boundary area of, the, of where the shadow would be. Like this, make an elbow. See, then make a little elbow there. Once again, it's just the tiniest little things, but if I curve those transitions, then it makes the surface look rounded. So then let's make his arm here. I'm not gonna lie, this is tricky stuff doing the anatomy. Okay. Uh, let's see, there's kind of a little Tell you what, I think it'd be cool. So if I made a shadow, just going. Oh man, the marker's putzing up. That's the problem with these solvent-based markers. They dissolve that paint. I got this generic permanent marker and it actually works better, probably because it doesn't have as strong of a solvent. They make it look like the light's coming in, casting down that way. All right, then I've got his bicep here getting squished out of the way. See, I want it to look like that stone tablet is squishing his arm up. Shoulder. This is one of my favorite parts of this drawing right here, is the, the hair blowing in the wind. <laughs> Must be fun to be a comic book artist, you know what I mean? Okay. So then we'll make some weave. I'll make some wrinkles. This clothing. So over time, I've learned that there are certain categories of wrinkles that can be categorized. And it's a lot easier to remember what you're putting where, you know, what kind of wrinkles you swear when you're able to categorize them. And I'll do another video where I talk about that more in depth. For now, I'm just drawing them. So then you see, I make this heavier line right here, and then I make it Right here, I make it curve down and just go right in there. Makes things look, you know, like they've got dimension. Okay, stone stone tablets coming out right here. I can make a fat line right here. And then we've got uh, more of his cloak to make. And 
make a belt right here. And this is going to be the tricky part up in here on his, I'll just say dress. It's probably offensive to somebody. I don't know what else to call it though. Okay, it's on this. We got big wrinkles coming down. Now I've mapped these out. So I've got one, where do I have these guys? This is tricky. I took all that time to make those so that I could make it look really nice, you know. I don't want to do it wrong now. So I'm using thinner lines. Now, I've made lines to show every bend in the fabric, so that includes the concave areas, like the valleys of the wrinkles. I did borders around those as well as the ridges of the wrinkles. So there's more lines in here than what you would see in like a painting. You know what I mean? Oh, we got one coming down here. The tip is getting hammered on this marker too, so so see how when I come up under his belt how I flare out and merge it with that shadow that's there so that it looks like it's getting pinched and so that it looks like the shapes are coming together once again by rounding those edges Right now, this is the underside of a wrinkle right here. So here I'd make a fat line. Then as it comes up, it gets thinner. A smooth transition. I'll do it again right here. This is the same thing. Here, it's not as extreme of a bend. I want it to look like it's a softer transition there. Then right here, this is the boundary area of another wrinkle coming back out where this one is a valley. So we'll make skinny lines right here. Kind of losing track of where I'm at. I think what I'll do is make this come all the way up into here, like this, because he's got a leg coming here. So we'll follow the shape of his leg, like that. Then this. This wrinkle comes down. I'll come along the outside of this edge and use thinner lines, kind of overlap them like that. And then when I get down here, I use a fat line. See? It's cool, it adds a nice effect, nice, you know, 3D shape to it to make that line on the bottom flat. And then to, to make that gradual transition to the thinner lines. Same thing on this guy's arm over here. Look at this guy's arm. Right. See? Wait, let me move the camera. See the fat lines I did underneath? And then when I got to like the tendons and the wrist here, 
instead of just making lines could just come straight out with corners left behind I round all of those transitions so that it looks like rounded shapes even though they're hard edges unlike what a photograph would show they still you know communicate to your to your logic that there's round shapes there so let's go back to Moses Okay. Now there is very specific reason that I put the wrinkles where I did to make this look. Hold on. I got sneeze. <laughs> <clears throat> to make this look realistic. Uh, but. I want to cover that in another video so I can do a better job of it. Let's see. Uh, here we go. Thin lines up on these top edges. And This is a concave area. See that fat line is where the fabric is sagging down over his knee and then hooking under. So I made that fat line. Okay, then here make some more wrinkles in here. Uh, this area was kind of coming out. So you see, this is all one convex wrinkle, this whole shape. And I made the boundary around the entire shape. If I was painting this, this line would not exist. It would just be a change of color from here to here. But since I'm just drawing outlines at this point, you know, I, I just use thin lines to represent my transitions around a surface. That's why a lot of them, like my guys over there, a lot of squiggly lines everywhere. You know, it's hard to make sense of it. But when it's painted, it'll all come together. Yeah, and right here, I think what I'll do is another fat line. You know, because as you get near the edge of a piece of fabric, those wrinkles can really bunch up if it's been curved around, something like that. Then I put a second layer of cloak right here. Just because I thought it would look cool. Alright, and 
then I put Everywhere these lines come down, I'm going to make transitions. 